Hello and welcome back to Distributions, the video series where we talk about generalized functions and how we can use them for partial differential equations. And in today's part 15, we will define the notion support for distributions. So this is a similar procedure as always, we generalize a thing we already know for ordinary functions. And indeed, the notion support for distributions is needed to generalize the convolution for distributions even more. And how we can do that, you will see in part 16. And moreover, before we go into the details of this video here, I first want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. And please don't forget, with the link in the description, you can download a lot of additional material for the videos. Okay, then I would say, let's immediately start with the topic of today, which is about the so-called support. And indeed, we already know that for an ordinary function f defined on Rn. There we just look at the points in Rn where f is non-zero. For example, we could visualize the graph of f like this, and then you see at some parts the function is completely given as the zero function. And exactly these parts don't belong to the support because the support tells us where the function actually does something. And most importantly, the support always has to be a closed set in Rn. And with that you can already remember, the complement of the support is always an open set. And now obviously for an ordinary function f, this concept is easy to define as a set, we just take all the points x in Rn, at which f of x is not vanishing. So there we have the whole set where f does something interesting, but still we want to have a closed set. And in order to get that, we just take the closure of this set. Okay, so this is the definition of the support of f, and as I've already said it, the complement is an open set in Rn. In fact, we can say it's the largest open set at which f vanishes. This means if we call this set u and we restrict f to this u, we get out the zero function. Obviously, this can work for a lot of open sets, but there is a maximal one and this is exactly the complement of the support. This means we could use this property also to define the support if we don't want to use this formula here. And it turns out, this is exactly what we have to do for distributions. This makes sense, because for distributions, we cannot say what happens at a given point. However, by using test functions, we can still say something about a local behavior of distributions. So let's take a distribution t, which first of all is a linear functional defined on the test functions. But now as for a function f, one could ask what is the value of t at a given point x0. Your first answer could be that this does not make sense at all, but we can give some meaning to this question. Namely, for a given point x0, we can look at a lot of test functions around this point. This means the test function is 0 except for a small neighborhood around this point x0. This means, by using test functions, we get some information what the value of t at the point x0 should be. But obviously we don't get the full information, so we cannot answer the question for values of a distribution. Hence the question for values at single points is not so meaningful, but we can smear over the point and then we get the question for a whole subset. So instead of x0, we talk about a whole open set around this point. Therefore, let's consider an open set u in Rn. And then we can actually define what it means that the distribution t vanishes on this set. In other words, now it makes sense to say that the values of t are given as 0 in the set u. And now you already know, we define this by using test functions. So we just apply t to any test function phi that has support inside this open set. And if we always get out 0, we have exactly what we want. So this is the whole meaning, 
we can use a lot of test functions, but we always get out zero. And therefore it doesn't matter how high the test function gets with its values, because we only talk about the value zero for the distribution anyway. And with that definition, you can already see that we can use it to define the support for distributions as well. However, before we do that, let's first look at an example. And there I would say, we can immediately look at the delta distribution. And there it's not hard to see at all that delta is zero outside of the origin. So we would write delta is equal to zero in Rn without the origin. And you know the reason for that is because delta of phi is phi at the origin. So obviously if zero is not in the support of phi, then we get out zero here. On the other hand, this one here is also the largest open set where delta is equal to zero. And therefore we would say that the support of the delta function is given by the complement and this is just the origin again. And with that we already have an idea to generalize that, so to make a whole definition for all distributions. We just have to use these open sets where the distribution vanishes. The only question is then, do we have a maximal open set? And in fact we have it and we can put it into a proposition. So we can just write for every distribution t, we find a maximal open set with that property. And in order to make this notation clear, let's call this set u max. So again, the condition we want is that the distribution t vanishes in u max. And just to make it clear, maximal here means that if we find another open set u where t vanishes, then u is already a subset of u max. And now we can also put a definition into this proposition, namely the complement is what we want to call support of t. And of course we can use the same notation as before, so the support of t is given as rn without u max. And as the complement of an open set, this is a closed set. So you see, the support of a distribution is well defined if we can prove this definition. So this means we just have to find such a maximal open set. And it turns out that this is not hard at all. Simply because we can look at the whole collection of these open sets with the given property. Again, which simply means that the distribution t should vanish in u. And now the whole set of these subsets u I want to call curved u. And now you see, one possibility to find a maximal set is just to take the union of all these possible sets. So we have the union over the set u where u comes from this curved u. And that's it, this one has to be our u max because there cannot be any bigger set. This is obvious because all possible open sets are already in this union. So it's definitely the maximal set, but still one question remains, do we really have that the distribution vanishes in it? Obviously we have this property for the subsets, but it's not clear if we also have it for the union. Hence, this is exactly what we have to show now. And to do that, we have to take an arbitrary test function phi, where its support lies completely in u max. So maybe as a visualization, we could say this is the support of phi in Rn. And now since it lies inside of u max, we know it's covered by the whole union. So we have infinitely many sets u that cover this compact set. And now we can visualize this covering for example like this. So the whole thing might look complicated, but since we have compactness of the set, we can simplify it. Indeed, this is an important property of compact sets. If you have a covering with open sets, then we know that finitely many already suffice. So we say that we have a finite subcover, which means this union here can be replaced by a finite union. And then it does not matter if we still need many sets, because now it's a much simpler problem, because now it's a finite problem. In particular, now we can also label the sets, so we can call them u1, u2 and so on. 
And maybe the last one we can just call UM. Okay, so in fact, we are almost done with the whole proof because now we can use a technical fact for such a finite union. And this fact we want to use has the fancy name partition of unity. It just tells us that whenever we have such a finite union of open sets in Rn, we find finitely many test functions such that they add up to 1. And this works because these open sets will always have an overlap. So it's always possible to find test functions which only have support inside of one of these sets. But they can be chosen in such a way that on the overlap they add up to 1. That's why we call it partition of unity, because it says that the one function can be written in such a complicated way. So maybe let's make a concrete here. We have test functions and we can call them psi1, psi2 until psi m. And now each of these test functions psi i satisfies that the support lies inside ui. And there please note, the support is a compact set inside this open set. So obviously this fact is not so surprising, but now we can choose the test function in such a way that the sum over it is equal to 1. More precisely, we want to have it for a lot of points x. Now indeed, it cannot hold for every point x in the whole union, but it can definitely hold for all points x in the support we cover with the union. And this is exactly what we want to have here. Indeed, this is something you can remember. This partition of unity works for every compact set we cover with finitely many open sets. So at this point, I don't want to prove this partition of unity because I just want to use it in the proof here. However, if you are interested in the technical details of this partition of unity, I can definitely do another video about that. You can just tell me in the comments if you are interested in that. Okay, but here, as I already told you, we will just use it, so it means I can rewrite the whole test function phi. At each point x, we can just multiply the value phi of x with this one function, and we will not change anything. And actually, this works for all x in Rn, because outside of the support of phi, we have zero on both sides anyway. And that's the whole trick, because now we can apply our distribution t to phi. And in order to keep it tidy, we will write it with a dual pairing as always. So we have t applied to phi, where phi can be written as this finite sum. Hence we can use the linearity and pull out the whole sum. And indeed at this point we are finished, because now we apply t to a distribution which has support completely in ui. And in fact, for each ui, we already know that the distribution t vanishes in it. So we see the conclusion is that we simply sum up zeros here. And therefore, t applied to the test function phi is also zero. And as you remember, we have chosen phi as a test function in u max, which shows that t also vanishes on u max. And this was exactly the only point missing in our proof. So we are done, and the result is that the support of every distribution is well defined. And as I already told you at the beginning, this fact we will use to extend the definition of the convolution. However, this is the topic for the next video, so I really hope I meet you there, and have a nice day. Bye bye.